The same example can be shown the other way around for decryption. When we enter VOLLW, we'll be getting the output as SLIIT. Transposition techniques. One of the techniques under transposition cipher is that the rail fence technique. Here the scenario is that we assign a depth as 2 and the original message welcome to PLDC is distributed among the array with the depth of 2 as you can see in the slide. Finally the encrypted message becomes WLOETL C E C M O P D. The related pseudocode for the rail fence technique is as follows. stream ciphers versus block ciphers. In this section we have emphasized the differences between stream ciphers versus block ciphers. A stream cipher encrypts the plain text bit by bit in streams. A block cipher encrypts n bit blocks at a time. For example, a 256 bit cipher encrypts 256 bit blocks at a time. Short blocks block have to be padded. Practical Algorithms Let us now look at some of the algorithms related to stream ciphers. Data encryption standard is one of the most oldest algorithms which is developed by the US government. Here the block size is 64 bits and the key size is 56 bits. The next is the algorithm known as IDEA. Here also the block size is 64 bits but the key size is 128 bits. Advanced encryption standard is the most recently implemented algorithm. This is expected to be applied to practical scenarios in the near future. This is also known as Rendel crypto system and the block size of this algorithm can vary as 128, 192 or 256 bits. Key size can also be 128, 192 or 256 bits. Data encryption standard. Data encryption standard is the most widely used encryption scheme but currently due to security issues people prefer some other schemes better than this. This is also known as data encryption algorithm. DES is a block cipher with a 64-bit length plain text and a key with a 56-bit in length. Long plain texts are segmented into 64-bit blocks when processing. This diagram explains the overall functionality of the DES algorithm. Here a 64 bit plain text goes to an initial permutation. Initial permutation means you jumble out the bits in some defined order. 
then you carry out 16 rounds of identical looking operations once you complete these 16 rounds it will create a 32 bit swap 32 bit swap means the number of 64 bit is divided into two parts as each consisting of 32 bits and the first 32 bit segment would be shifted to the end where the second segment then resides in the front 32 bit swap is then forwarded to the reverse initial permutation to get the 64 bit cipher text in reverse initial permutation whatever the initial permutation done is reversed back these permutations are used in order to increase the complexity in the point of the intruder when considering the rounds here the 56 bit key would be passed to a permutation choice 1 where the key is permuted initially then this key is passed to round by round in every round you make a left circular shift of each residual key so that you will be getting different keys in different rounds in each of these rounds you pass the key to different permutational blocks like PC2 where the key is again been permuted and also expanded the 56 quantity keys to 64 bits with the aid of the keys generated which is K1, K2 and up to K16. The rounds carry out their operations and the round blocks are ex executed one after the other. The overall processing of rounds can be explained as follows with the aid of these two formulas. Let us consider the round number i. This is the data block which comes from the round i-1. Here this data block would be divided into two halves. The right part is called r i-1 and the left half can be defined as l i-1. The objective of round i is to generate a new block with two parts as r i and l i from the block of round i-1. Here another resource available is the key of round i. To construct the li part, we will be mapping, mapping the ri-1 part to it and ri will be the exclusive function of li-1. And some complex functions of key and ri-1. This f is a complex function which consists of some linear operations. Likewise, 16 rounds are executed and the final ciphertext becomes more hard to track even by brute force technique. But today, the concerns about DES is that the 56-bit key is not security-wise sufficient enough for the applications which carry out financial information electronically. Therefore, longer key Therefore, longer key lengths has to be used for such purposes. Triple DES is an expanded version of DES. This uses three executions of DES. Therefore, your effective key size would increase. As per the formula, we encrypt P using key K1 and decrypt using K2. Again encrypt using key 3. This combination can differ. Same thing is done when decrypting. In decryption you may use K3 to decrypt, K2 to encrypt and decrypt using K1. Here since we run 3 times the effective key length becomes 168 bits need for a new standard. DES had been in use for a long time but as time passed off a need for a more advanced encryption algorithm arised. It was proven by critics certain exhaustive key search attacks can break it. Even though as a solution triple DES can be used it was comparatively slow. In 1997 US organization called NIST called out for ciphers. Out of five shortlisted competitors, Rendell was selected as the most advanced encryption stand. 
the AES crypto system. In the rental system, the block length and the key length can differ as 128, 192 or 256 bits. But the AES standard limited the block length to 128 bits. Even though the AES was somewhat similar to DES, it has some more advantages and it was theoretically proven that it is resistant against all attacks identified up to today. But in the future, someone may invent an attack to break AES. AES was also easy to implement both in hardware and software. The C language implementation for encryption and decryption of DES algorithm is as follows. The C language implementation for encryption and decryption of RSA algorithm is as follows. usage for private key cryptography encryption. This is a pictorial representation of the usage of encryption. The circle represents the person whom you are trying to send the message. So the private key resides only with that person and public key may reside at several places. Here the only problem is that anyone who has B's public key can send messages to B and B has to allow. Let us now look at the illustration. With some slight modification in public key cryptography, we can use the same method for authentication also. In authentication, we verify that the person we are talking to is the same exact person. Here in the picture, this scenario is explained. Person A, in order to send the message to B, encrypt the plain text using his own private key and generate the cipher text. Then from the other end, person B decrypt the message using A's public key where B would get a meaningful clear message. Assume that someone else is sending a message on behalf of A and then B can clearly identify that the message was sent by someone else and not A because B would be using A's public key to decrypt so if someone else has sent a message, the probability